Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Last year I did a video titled Windows Defender vs. Ransomware, where I tested the default security of Windows with Windows Defender against some of the most infamous ransomware from the last five years, including threats like WannaCry. The results were, well, quite interesting. Since then, of course, Windows has had a lot of updates. Uh, we're now on 20H2 in terms of version, and I just wanted to rerun the experiment. This should give you an idea of how well protected you are if you're using Windows Defender as your primary line of defense. This video is brought to you by Malwarebytes Privacy. If you want a super fast VPN, check them out using the link in the description. Without further ado, let's take a look at our ransomware. So as you can see, we've got 60 items here. Infamous threats from the last five years have added some in there. So there are new threats like Wasted Locker, you know, the ransomware that cost Garmin millions. And we're going to automate a network-based attack vector on the task system to see how Windows Defender fares. In order to do that, we have our automation tool called Malex, which some of you may be familiar with. We do these kinds of tests with all sorts of endpoint security solutions. So if you want to check those out, you can always subscribe. Malix is essentially going to go through each of these files, run them on the system, show us any system modifications that are happening. All of this is going to happen from a network location, which is how a lot of ransomware does. Everything is good to go. So let's get testing. As you can see, threats are being blocked right away. We're passing through these samples rather quickly, and this is to be expected because, as I mentioned, these are threats from the last five years. So they're very well known at this point. So I would expect a good endpoint security solution to block all of these. Ooh, it looks like we have a miss here. So that's very interesting. We'll see if that actually follows through, if the ransomware executes successfully, or if there's any behavioral protection that blocks it later on. But there you have it, the test is complete. We've executed all 60 of our files with a proactive detection of 98.33%, and we only missed one sample, which is Scarab. Now this is a pretty deadly ransomware, as the name would suggest. Anyone remember the Mummy movies? Yeah, that's what we're going through right now. So let's take a look at the processes on the system. So I'm just going to open up the tools and we'll see if we can notice what's going on with Scarab. Might be crawling through our system right now trying to encrypt files. As you can see from, uh, you know, Malex, we can see that Scarab did create a new file handle, sysmain.sdb, so that's probably what it uses to begin the encryption process. Now looking at Process Explorer, just going to try to condense this, and it does seem like Scarab is active and running, and it appears it started a sub-process. Alright, so after a considerable amount of time, it seems like the ransomware completed its encryption process, and now we get the ransom note saying that your files are encrypted. Now we're going to take a look at the uh, data we have, and there's some good news here. So in terms of the documents and pictures, these are protected folders under controlled folder access, and they were spared. So the files were not actually encrypted, and if we open them, you can see that the contents are actually safe. It's not strictly a threat blocking feature. It just blocks anything from accessing these folders. And just to demonstrate that, I'm going to show you the block history. And as you can see, it has also blocked Microsoft process. So this is more like a lockdown feature for certain folders, but I do recommend that you use it if you are depending on Windows Defender. But on the other hand, anything that was not a protected folder like the desktop, for example, was actually encrypted. So if we go into our tools, all of this is encrypted. So unless you specifically put files in the few folders that are locked down, your computer would still be encrypted by this. So now we're gonna move on to the more interesting part of the test, which is going to be disabling the connection to the internet and doing a test of the offline protection that Windows Defender has. The reason this is relevant is because, as I mentioned, we are testing well-known threats at this point. 
So it's very possible that if it's doing a simple cloud lookup query, it should come up with, oh, this file bad. And I really want to see what happens when it can't reach the cloud. So as you can see, we have disconnected from the internet. And now we're going to restore to the previous snapshot and we'll rerun the same test under different circumstances. So we're going back, rolling back the encryption. We should have all our files. We can pretty much directly start up Malix again. Same situation, except no internet this time. Everything's good to go, so let's get testing once again. So far, so good. As you can see, it's still blocking threats, but it seems like it's missing a few more than before. And things are getting worse. So now we're hovering at around 87% in terms of proactive detection. We've got Black Claw running and uh, taking off, and now we have a black screen. And apparently, we need to pay $5.9 million in ransom to get our system back. <laughs> That's not nice. We've got this little jester making fun of us. I'm gonna try to alt tab out of this and it just gets worse. Now we have the fake Windows update phantom ransomware running. Now if we try to return to our test, it does seem stuck at around um, 46 files. Okay, it's going now. And we have Shell Locker on the system now. It says we have two days to pay the monies or our files will be gone. I'm all tabbing a lot to no avail. So try to close this out. See if we can return to the test. The test does create um, a result log, so Attention. maybe we can access that. Attention. Attention. Let's see. Your documents, photos, databases, and other important files have been Not encrypted. really, because it seems our shared folder is now getting encrypted quite heavily. <laughs> Attention. 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 Your documents, photos databases and other important files have been encrypted. Okay, so here we go. Here are the results. Test is done, 60 files were successfully executed, and we have a final proactive detection of 83.33% with 10 samples missed. So the samples missed were Black Claw, Crypto Wall, James Ransom, Kill Disk, uh, Popcorn, Scarab, Shade, Shell Locker, and uh, the snake game ransomware. So all of these successfully executed on the system. Now let's go back and see what the situation is. So some of our shared folder is also encrypted this time. Let's see what happens if we try to reboot the system. And the moment we reboot, we have another ransomware that has changed the desktop background. It's called Kryptonite. At least this one only asks for $500, but ooh, there's a lot of nasty stuff on the desktop. So this is what happens to Windows Defender when the internet goes away. Kind of shows you how cloud dependent it is. So the system's a complete disaster. We've even got icons uh, that are not showing up. If we take a look at our documents, that's really cool. So it seems like the data here was still not affected because of um, the protected folders feature. And this is kind of why I really strongly recommend using that feature if you are sticking with Windows Defender. Again, this is not an ideal result regardless. As I mentioned, uh, these are well-known ransomware variants. And by well-known, I don't just mean a couple of days old, a week old. I mean, there are articles about most of them online, research papers, that sort of thing. So I would expect them to just be blocked regardless, either by some kind of behavior blocker, intrusion prevention system, or just old school signatures. But as you can see, Windows Defender is not really 
that good when it comes to handling these threats. So if you are sticking with it, I would recommend turning on controlled folder access, even if it is a pain and making sure your important documents are in there. And we do these tests all the time with different products. So if you're interested in that stuff, you should definitely check out the PC security channel or subscribe to watch our upcoming tests. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and share it if you enjoyed it, because a lot of people don't have the awareness of uh, their exposure to things like ransomware and what they need to do to stay protected. If you'd like to do some cybersecurity tests for your business, you can get in touch at thepcsecuritychannel.com. And now a word from our sponsors. Many of you may be familiar with the name Malwarebytes when it comes to anti-malware, but they have recently launched a brand new VPN service called Malwarebytes Privacy. I've been running and testing this for the last two weeks, and one of the most amazing things I've noticed is the speeds and consistency, especially in servers in the United States and Europe. In some cases, I've noticed it to be faster than some of the mainstream VPN providers. And this is a VPN service that focuses on being a VPN. They don't offer any cybersecurity protection with it, which means no tracking at all. They don't store any logs. The cybersecurity component is offered as an entirely separate browser extension. You can connect to servers in any country, and once you do so, it's going to remember your choice and auto-connect you next time. So it's a full-featured VPN. They do have a combined offer where you can get it at a discount, so if you are already planning on getting Malwarebytes anti-malware or already use it, it might be a really good deal for you. So show them some love for sponsoring the PC security channel. Check out Malwarebytes Privacy. Link will be on screen and in the description. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.